BTC Pay Server is a self-hosted open source Bitcoin payment processor that anyone can use. It is secure, private, censorship resistant. And today we're gonna to take a look at how to set up your own BTC Pay Server on a cloud hosting service called LunaNode. And then we're gonna link it to your own Bitcoin wallets so you can accept Bitcoin payments from anyone, anywhere, anytime. I am Ben with the BTC Sessions. This is your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin. Bitcoin Well is one of the best places to be buying and selling Bitcoin in Canada and the US. And now with the advent of Bitcoin Well Infinite, high net worth individuals can enjoy an OTC desk with white glove experience tailored to transactions of $50,000 or more. This helps high net worth individuals, family offices, businesses, and trusts secure the best prices and execute large transactions with speed and efficiency. You can expect personalized service, rapid fulfillment, no slippage, custom trade structures, risk management guidance, and global buy and sell capabilities. And hey, if you're not a high net worth individual, not to worry, you can still benefit. If you sign up and you refer people through your personalized link, any fees paid on their first purchases will earn you 21% of those fees. So you can check them out today. There's a link down below to sign up, or you can simply scan the QR code on the screen. Bitcoin Well, check them out today. Coinkite.com has some of the best hardware on the market today to secure your Bitcoin. The cold card queue is an absolute powerhouse and is my daily driver. And on top of this, they have plenty of other goodies, including the Mark IV, the Tap Signer, Open Dimes, the Block Clock, and much more. If you head over to their website, make sure you use code BTC Sessions at checkout to get a nice discount. Links are in the show notes down below. So let's talk prerequisites here. What are you going to need to know in order to successfully navigate this tutorial? Well, as I was saying, BTC Pay is, of course, open source. You can self-host it and uh, it doesn't cost anything to use the software itself. However, um, a lot of people will likely be utilizing some sort of cloud hosting mechanism to do so. Um, I do have my own Start9 node sitting at home. If you're familiar with what that is, you may be curious about tinkering with that and trying BTC Pay there. You can do that if you like. Um, but of course, currently at the time of making this video, um, you're going to have to learn a lot of networking stuff around that. In particular, uh, it's behind Tor and all that. So that may be a little bit above your pay grade, uh, but it will become easier in the future. And when it does, I will add that uh, as a video on how to do that in the BTC playlist. Uh, which brings me to my second point. This is going to be a BTC Pay server series with a bunch of different cool things you can do with BTC Pay server. This is gonna kind of be your starting point, um, your basic way of setting up a BTC Pay on a cloud service. Uh, so as I said, we're gonna be using LunaNode which means that uh, to use LunaNode, there is a monthly fee that you end up paying. You'll see what that is as, as I go through. Um, it will be priced in Canadian dollars as I'm doing it, but you can look on the website or, you know, and ch prices change, so who knows. But nonetheless, uh, there is a monthly fee associated with LunaNode if that's how you are hosting it. There's other ways to host, but this is how I'm going to uh, demo for this one. Um, the other thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to link some external Bitcoin wallets. So if you don't have a Bitcoin wallet already, um, that's probably a better place to start than starting with BTC Pay. Um, you probably be, have some gaps in knowledge if you've never used a Bitcoin wallet. The one I'm going to be utilizing today is called Sparrow Wallet, which can be found at sparrowwallet.com. I will link down below to a full tutorial I've done on that wallet. It can look a little tricky, uh, but um, you can use it very simply as well. And I will explain the setup as I'm doing it. So you can just kind of follow along there and you should be totally fine. Um, I'm also going to be covering utilizing a lightning node so you can accept lightning payments here. Uh, and we're going to be using something called Olympus from Zeus to be able to get a nice big lightning channel to our node so that we can easily accept payments. 
I will explain that as we get to it. What I will say is that uh, if you want to remain private when using BTC Pay and paying for uh, Luna Node and all that, you can pay in Bitcoin. So it is nice if you have an existing Lightning wallet on your phone, and that can really be anything. I've done tutorials on lots of different Lightning wallets. Um, you can pay on chain as well, uh, but it'll just be more convenient for you if you're using a mobile Lightning wallet. Plenty of options. I'll link a couple in the show notes down below uh, so you know how those work too, but I'm sure many of you will be familiar. So that's about it. We're basically going to be doing this entirely from the computer here. And uh, we'll have Sparrow Wallet and we'll use Olympus to get a lightning channel. And then we will get cracking at that. So we're going to dive in. We're going to take a look at Luna Node and getting set up with an account there. And then we'll continue on. All right, so here we are on Luna Node, and what we're going to do is you got a couple different options here. You've got uh, a little section uh, in the middle here that says get started. You put in the email address and start your free trial, or up at the top where it says log in or sign up. Both are effectively going to do the same thing. I'll just go at the top right and click sign up. It's going to ask for an email address, a password, and a country. So I'm going to go ahead and I'll plunk in those items. Okay, I've got the necessary info. I'll hit sign up. All right, so now you have some options here when it comes to billing. Of course, I'm going to have to go into my email and click a link to get back here to verify my account. So I'm going to do that just momentarily. I'll be right back. All right, and with my email verified, I now have options to either validate a credit card. Now, there's you've got again you've got a choice here so you can validate a credit card and get a 60 day free trial um so that's like a 20 dollar promotional credit um it will involve authorizing a five dollar usd authorization on your on your card uh, it's not a charge it's just making sure that uh you know it's a functioning credit card um, however, if you really want to pay with Bitcoin, which means that you're not uh, giving up as much personal information, then you can do so uh, and add funds to your account. However, you're skipping the free trial if you do so. So nonetheless, I'm going to end up doing uh, the uh, Bitcoin option and I'm going to do that now. So I'm going to click on deposit credit card, PayPal or Bitcoin. And so then the amount of credit that I'm going to add off the hob, I would recommend at least putting uh, 20 bucks in here because the initial sync and all that, you're going to be getting close to that, especially if you do the expedited way, which I'll explain in a second. Um, but if you don't want to have to come back every single month and you plan on using this for a while, then you can always put more. So I'm going to put in 20 bucks and I'm going to choose BTC pay. Uh, and it allows me to pay with Lightning. I'm going to hit add credit. And it is going to ask for a phone number verification process. I don't know if this is true in other countries. So this is the one place where you may have a little bit of information to deal with. It says that VoIP numbers are not permitted. However, I will say that there are places online that you can receive text messages and uh, and get verification codes Uh without having to use a number. So Google is your friend, so feel free to do that. Anyways, I'm going to jump forward. I'm going to do the phone number verification now. All right, so I received a text with a code. I'm going to hit submit. And there we go. So I've completed the phone verification. And now, again, I'm going to go and I'm going to pay my credit here. So I'm going to choose $20 and I'm going to choose BTC pay so that I can pay in lightning. I'm going to hit add credit. And then there's a button that says pay with BTC pay. So I'll click on that. It's going to bring me to a spot where right now it is on chain. So if you just have a regular on chain wallet, you can pay that way, but I'm going to choose lightning here. So I get this. And uh, I can choose open in wallet. Uh, sometimes it'll choose plugins that you may have. Otherwise, you can copy the invoice or scan with your phone. Um, I'm going to uh, copy the invoice here. Okay, we'll jump back. And then uh, I've got speed wallet just added into my browser as a plugin, which is super convenient. So I'll just hit send and I will 
paste in that invoice. I'll hit proceed. It sees how much I'm paying. I'm going to go ahead and hit send. There you go. So I've made my payment nice and easy, quick with Lightning Wallet. So that's all good. Um, once you get that green check mark, you can hit return to Luna node and now you are topped up. Okay. So we've got our account on Luna node. We've uh, added some credit to our account. We're now ready to start with the creation of our own BTC pay server. So we're going to tackle that next. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to have two things open. So we're going to stay here on this Luna node dashboard, but I also have a second window open and this is launch BTC pay dot Luna node dot com. And I will link that in the show notes so that you have it easily clickable. Um, but we need an API ID and an API key. And we're going to see what those things are in a moment. Um, but on this page itself, it says create an account at Luna node, add funds and create an API key. So we've done the first two. We're just on the third part right now. And so I'm going to show you back on Luna node on this dashboard here up in the top, right? There's something that says API. You're going to click on that. Now we're not going to type in anything extra here. We're just going to hit create API credential. So when I do that, we do not want to navigate away from this page because something's going to pop up and it won't return again. And so we'll just have to do it again uh, if if we navigate away from this page. So I'm going to hit create API credential. Now, the important thing that you want right away is this up here, this API credential. So it's this long string. So you're going to want to copy that. You're going to jump back over to that page. You're going to paste it in where it says API key. Now we need the API ID. Go back to Luna node. And this is the one down below right here. You're going to copy that and you're going to jump back over to BTC pay and you're going to paste it in. Now I've just done this. However, you guys have seen that key. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to go back. I'm going to redo it. I'm going to delete that old API credential. I'm going to show you how to do that just so you know. Um, so I can just hit remove and that will remove the API key. So if you screw up or something or you forget to copy this and it's just sitting there, you can just remove it. You can do it again. OK, but these are the two things you need. The key is up here and the ID is down there and you just paste them in. And then once you have that, you hit continue. So we'll be right back after I've done that. Once again, I'm going to remove this other one. All right. So now that I've done that, it says launch BTC pay server on Luna node. The following IP address has been reserved on your account. Please point your host name to this IP and enter the host name below. So this is if you want to link uh, your own website. Um, so it says if you own a domain like yourdomain.com, you can enter a host name like btcpay.yourdomain.com here. You will first need to log into your domain name registrar, create a DNSA recording pointing to btcpay.yourdomain.com to the IP shown above. So that is uh, a little bit beyond the scope of this video. I'm not going to get into domain names and pointing DNS records at, at pages, but it is possible there. So you can always find um, information on doing DNS stuff uh, on wherever you have a website. But if you don't have a website, you don't need to do this and you would simply hit use BTC pay, whatever number they've given you here. And so we're just going to do that simple option for now. So I'm going to hit continue. Now, <laughs> I will say that there are plugins for a bunch of shit coins here. You're not going to need that. I'm going to leave liquid out for now. Reason I'm leaving it out for now. Uh, I do use liquid Bitcoin quite a bit. Um, just day to day. I use aqua wallet. I use lots of different stuff uh, with that. But um, I'm going to cover that in a subsequent video of all the plugins and everything. So I'm keeping it basic Bitcoin and lightning for this video. OK, so I'm just going to leave Bitcoin there. Uh, you can put in uh, an address, uh, an email address. Um, I'm going to leave that. Uh, we're going to do mainnet. 
We're going to do lightning right now. None is selected, but I'm going to do a drop down uh, for this video. I'm going to use LND uh, VM plan. So um, I'm going to leave this as default uh, for four gigabytes of RAM. OK, um, if you start playing around with that, that'll change your monthly price. So I'm just going to leave it at four. Uh, and I am going to keep this checked, especially because I'm doing tutorial. I want this to be quicker, but there's a $3 cost to add additional CPU utilization, which will speed up the sp uh, speed at which you download and sync the entire Bitcoin blockchain. But there is going to be a wait there. OK, um, other than that, I'm not doing any additional special advanced options. That's pretty much it. So I can see that it's going to cost me $15.80. Those are if I'm not mistaken, Canadian dollars. Uh, I did select Canada. I could be mistaken though. I don't know. Uh, so, so don't quote me on that. Double check. Uh, but either way, okay, we're good to go. I'm going to hit launch VM. And this will take a couple minutes here. Now, partway through this, you're going to get this message that says uh, your VM has launched successfully and BTC Pay server is being set up. After about five minutes, it'll be ready at the following link. And so that's going to be your link to access your BTC pay server and begin setting it up. So I'm going to wait a few more minutes and then I'll try clicking that link and we will continue. All right. So after a few minutes, I clicked the link that had been provided to me. And this is where I'm now going to create a BTC pay server account. And so um, it's important to note that this account is specific to the instance of BTC pay server that you are running on Luna node. So what I mean by that is Luna node, they have servers. You have basically rented space from their servers, which you are running a copy of BTC pay server on. And from that specific copy of BTC pay server on that piece of software that you are running, you are creating an account. So if you were to go to btcpayserver.org and then try and log in with the account you create here, it won't work because it doesn't exist on that website and that server. If you were to go to uh, voltage.cloud and create an account there and launch BTC Pay Server and try to log in with the same credentials you create here, it will not work because it's not the same copy that's running on LunaNode. OK, so this is specific just to if you're running it on Luna node and you continue running it on Luna node, this is your login. OK, hopefully that's clear. If, you, if it's not clear, hit me in the comments. Anyway, so you're going to choose an email, password and just confirm the password. So I'm going to do that right now. And then I'm going to hit create account. Once I've done that, I'm going to name my first store. So I'm going to be creating a store here um, for this one. We're. Let's just call it test, but you can call yours whatever you like. Obviously, um, you can create multiple stores. If this one doesn't work out, if you just want to test it out and, and figure something out and then delete it later, you can do that. So this is by no means set in stone. You can even change the name afterwards. Uh, I'm going to leave my default currency to USD and then I'm just going to use the recommended price source that looks fine to me. So I'm going to hit create a store. OK. And here we are on our BTC pay server dashboard. Now, what I'm going to say is currently when you set up with Luna node at the time of recording this video, um, BTC pay server has released a new version. So they've gone to uh, 2.0 version 2.0. And this is kind of a, a, a bit of an overhaul, but a lot of the menus are a little bit different. However, that is not the version we're currently on. The reason being is that the new version 2.0, it breaks some of the additional plugins and special features that you can add in um, at the current time. So if you're currently running BTC Pay Server um, at, and it's pretty close to the launch of this video that I've put out, you might want to wait a little bit to upgrade. But I am going to upgrade as soon as we get through this step because I want to go through the new, um, I want to go through all the new menus and make sure everything's in the same place so that this is, video is kind of future-proofed. However, 
my main point is that in the future, you may not need to upgrade the way that I am doing it. It may just be automatically on the new version. Um, and if that's the case, then you can kind of skip ahead to the next part. But I digress. Um, right now, it says your nodes are sinking. Your node is syncing the entire blockchain and validating the consensus rules. Now, this is going to take some time. So I'm basically going to jump off this now. I can let this sync and it's probably going to take a good couple of days to get through this. So um, obviously in the video, it's going to be much quicker than that. Uh, but when you get to this point, you know, take off. You, you don't even have to remain on the page, but what I would do is I would save your URL, the BTC pay, whatever number it is, dot lndyn.com. That's your login page. So you can come back here whenever you're ready. You can also find that same information over on your Luna node, uh, logging in there, but really you're just going to need that page to get to your BTC pay server and then you're good. So we'll be back. Um, and I'll probably be wearing something different a couple days from now when this is all synced up and we'll continue on with the tutorial. All right, so I want to show you guys how to update to BTC Pay version 2.0 and beyond. Now, there's been a couple updates since I initially started this video, even just bug fixes and so on and so forth. Um, and so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, there is a uh, um, an instruction on server settings and something called how to uh, SSH into your BTC Pay server, which is running on a uh, VPS or something like LunaNode. Um, and there's also a blog post from BTC Pay server that tells you how to update to 2.0 and beyond. And the, um, the reason that, again, that it's necessary this way for the time being is that uh, the 2.0 version makes some of the old uh, some of the old plugins not function anymore and they all need to be updated and everything so um, but that said this part that I'm doing here may not always be the same and may just be an automatic update in the future and beyond that, you can do this without updating to 2.0 if you're just going to do a basic on-chain wallet and a basic lightning node uh, without any fancy plugins added on top of this. Okay, so if that's the case and you don't feel like learning this part, you can skip ahead to uh, basic setup after you've been synced up. Otherwise, follow along with me. Now, what I will say is that... Um, there were a couple different things that I found that were slightly uh, separate from, well, not separate, different from how it was outlined here in these pieces of content. However, I will link to everything I'm showing you right here, these two, uh, these two resources, but I'm also going to include a breakdown of how to update with exact copy and paste instructions. So you can try mine or you can refer to these pages and, uh, and follow along. But nonetheless... Let's start from scratch. Let's say you've you know you you you've logged out a Luna node. You've kind of let this thing do its own, do its own thing. Let's center ourselves and get ourselves back in. So I'm going to log into Luna node first. So we're logged in. This is our dashboard. Down below it shows virtual machines, any services that we have running on Luna node service. Well, there's our BDC Pay server. Now, if I click on this, I'm going to see some information. Now, ideally, you do not want to share this information with anybody. However, I will decommission this uh, particular instance after this video, so I'm not super worried about it. Nonetheless, you see uh, a couple things that are important here. You're going to see uh, your IP address, your external IP address. That's important. You're also going to see a username and password. Okay. And... What we're going to do is we are actually going to open up a terminal window. So I'll do this here. Uh, I'm on a Mac, uh, and so this is how it's going to function for me. But I'm basically going to be um, typing in, and this is where I found it, by the way. Okay, so we are going to go SSH space and then our username at our IP address. Okay, 
That information, as we said, was here. Username, the at symbol, and our IP address. Okay, I'm gonna copy the IP address for now. I'll type in the rest. So I'm gonna go SSH, a space, Ubuntu, that's my username, at, and I'll paste in the IP address. Boom, and I'll hit enter. Okay, now it says, are you sure you wanna con continue connecting? I'm gonna say yes, and hit enter. Okay, now it's asking for my password. Let's go back and get that. That was right here. I'm just gonna copy it. And then I'm gonna jump back and I'm going to paste it. Now there's not gonna be any feedback when I do that. You're not gonna see like dots or uh, you know a, a hidden password. It does nothing, but you hit enter. And there we go. You can see we're now Ubuntu at BTC Pay 597869. That's the number of our BTC Pay server. Fantastic. Okay, so now we need to do uh, something different. We need to type uh, something that is sudo dash, not dash, sorry, space, su, and hit enter. This gives us access to the root uh, so that we can make changes. And I didn't need to expand that there, but we'll just bring it back up. So you can now see it says root, uh, and that's what yours should look like at whatever your BTC pay is. At this point, we're going to change the directory. So we're going to navigate to, and I'm just going to, I'm copy and pasting this. This will be in the show notes. I'm going to paste in this command, cd, and then a little dollar sign, btc pay underscore base underscore directory. And that changes. And now what I do is I type ls. This is going to list everything that's in this folder. And I can see something that says BTC pay server Docker. Okay. So I'm going to change to that. I'm going to go CD space BTC. And I can start typing. If I hit tab, it'll fill in the rest for me. There we go. And I can hit enter. So we're just, what we're doing right now is we're just finding the folder that we want to be in. Okay. At this point, I'm going to paste in a command. I'm just uh, pasting this from a doc that I have off to the side. But the command says git fetch dash a, and I'm going to hit enter. It's looking for uh, some GitHub files, um, which is where BTC Pay Server stores their latest updates. Then I'm going to paste the following, and let me just excuse the the weight here. But I'm again copy and pasting from a document I have out to the side. Paste that in git checkout 2.0 okay so now we are basically looking at the new update 2.0 and then we're going to paste the final command which is btc pay update and again this will just be in the show notes copy and paste copy and paste enter this is now going through and it is updating my BTC pay server to the latest version. And so uh, this will take a little bit of time. And once it's all done, we should be on the latest version of BTC pay and we'll go to log in to our BTC pay server and take a look to see if that is true. So we'll be back in a little bit. And how you know it's done is you'll be back down to root at BTC pay whatever your number is, and it will say BTC pay server Docker. And so uh, it looks like everything here is finished. I can see up here where it's saying that it's running and started and everything's all good to go. So if I want to get out of this, I can just type exit, oops, <laughs> or not, exit, my bad, and exit. There we go. Now I'm back to back to my computer. Now I'm back over on Luna node. And uh, if you're ever wondering, well, how the hell I, I forgot to bookmark my my uh, BTC pay server, wherever it is. Um, if you're looking for that, it's literally just the top of the page, you can just copy and paste that into your browser, and you'll be able to access it. And there we go. And how do we know if we're on the latest version? 
take a little peek down in the bottom right, I can now see version 2.0.3. There we go. We have successfully updated to version 2.0 and beyond. Uh, we're still in the midst of syncing here, uh, but we'll be back once that's done. We're at about 89%. And actually, uh, these were the little notifications that were popping up in the past days as updates were coming out. So I'll just hit mark those as seen because we've already updated. So we'll be back after we're fully synced. Okay, we are back in. And just to be clear, if things are looking a little bit different here, um, I'm actually syncing multiple uh, multiple instances of BTC pay server. And this one actually just happened to sync quicker. So I'm moving ahead with this one. Um, there's one thing different that I'll note, just so you know, over here on the left hand side, you can see that this one has a, a plugin for liquid. Um, we're not going to be addressing that in this video, but in future videos, we're going to take a look at it. Um, and down in the bottom right, it says nodes are syncing. If you'll notice my, uh, it looks like my um, my Bitcoin node is fully synchronized, which is kind of what I needed, whereas my liquid Bitcoin node is uh, in the midst of doing all that. So uh, just ignore the node syncing thing for that. That pertains to liquid, which we're not touching. We're going to go through the rest. In the meantime, let's take a look what's in front of us. Again, general navigation down the left hand side. We have our main dashboard that we're on right now, which gives us a couple prompts to set up a wallet and set up a lightning node. Those are two things we're going to get into. Uh, we have our settings. We have the various wallets that we're capable of utilizing here. Uh, we have options for invoices, reporting, requests, pull payments, payouts. We also have plugins. Uh, we currently have Shopify, point of sale, pay button, crowdfund, and then we have managed plugins. There are a ton of different plugins that again, for this video, we're not going to touch on too, too much, although I may touch on some lightning stuff just so that you can kind of see some options there. Um, and then we have, of course, server settings and your general account. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to center ourselves on the dashboard and we're going to first make sure that we're set up with a on-chain Bitcoin wallet and with our lightning node, though, take note, we're going to show how to do your own lightning node, but then we're going to show a couple plugin options that you may want to use if you don't want to have to deal with setting up a lightning node and dealing with channels. But I digress. Let's dive in. Let's figure out how to set up and plug in your Bitcoin wallet. All right, so up first, we're going to set up a Bitcoin wallet that we're going to then use with BTC Pay Server. If you already have an existing Bitcoin wallet um, and it's uh, using an interface or a piece of software that allows you to export something called the XPUB, then you're all set. You don't need to really do anything. If you're using something like Sparrow Wallet, um, then then you're pretty much good to go. Blue Wallet is another also simple one that you can use for this. Uh, but I would say if you're going to have a meaningful amount of money moving through this thing, you may want to consider having your funds when paid through BTC Pay Server go directly into a hardware device. Um, I use primarily my cold card queue for day-to-day -day use for anything where I'm going to have a decent amount of money sitting around, anything you'd consider more than uh, cash that you might carry in your pocket, you probably want to move towards hardware. So cold card queue, awesome option. You can use it with Sparrow Wallet, which I have up on my screen right now. Um, and I'll link to some basic videos on how to do that. If you see fit, you can always switch it out whenever you like, but let's set up our wallet here. We're just going to create a brand new wallet. Sparrow Wallet will also link a video down below if you're unfamiliar. So I'm going to say, uh, let's create a new wallet. Uh, we'll call this one BTC pay, uh, tutorial test, just so I know what it is. I'll hit, by the way, when in doubt with, uh, with Sparrow wallet, just hit the blue button that typically guides you in the right direction. Okay. Now this screen is going to look a little bit scary. There's a lot of stuff here. Don't worry. Uh, of course, if you have a hardware wallet, you're going to choose a connected har hardware wallet or perhaps with a cold guard queue air gapped but we're just creating a new wallet on this device. So we're going to choose new or imported software wallet. And there's some options up here just to keep this quick and simple. I'm going to use, uh, it says use 24 words as default. I'm just going to use 
12 words so that it's quick. So this is going to give us 12 words that we need to keep safe. You're going to see them on the screen here. Of course, I'm not going to be, I'll wipe this wallet by the time this goes up, but I'm going to generate a new wallet. Boom. So we have 12 words here. I would write those down. I would keep those safe. This is the keys to your money. Do not share this with anybody. Anybody with this information can access your money. Very important. Keep them safe. Uh, you can keep them in steel. By the way, uh, I love the guys over at uh, Seed or they kick ass if you want to see my video on how to back up your seed phrase in steel. Uh, anyways, so never do this. I'm taking a screenshot again just for quickness of this tutorial. Uh, so that I can re-put these in and confirm that I have them, but this should be physically kept, not digitally, okay? So I'm gonna hit confirm backup. I'm going to re-enter my words here. We'll skip ahead to where I've done that. All right, if I've entered them successfully uh, with no mistakes, it will say valid checksum with a little green check mark. I'm gonna hit the blue button again, blue button again, and then I'm gonna hit blue button last time for apply. I'm not going to do a password right now. The password would pertain to uh, if you're worried about somebody on your local computer getting in and accessing your balance if it is a hot wallet or just seeing the balance if you're using a cold storage device like a cold card. Uh, but I'm not going to do that right now. Okay. And so this wallet is now fully set up. If I go up to the top left on transactions, that's where I would see my balance, any incoming or outgoing transactions, a full history, all that. Uh, but I'm going to stay down on the bottom left in the setting screen that we were in because we're going to require some information from here momentarily. So let's jump back over to BTC Pay Server. We're here on our dashboard. The first thing uh, other than create or store, which we already did, is set up a wallet. So I'm going to click on that and it says uh, either you have a wallet or you don't have a wallet. I have a wallet. I just created one. So I'm going to connect existing wallet. And I'm going to go down to enter extended public key. So I'm going to click on that. And this is where I need to paste some info from Sparrow. Pretty simple. You're on the settings screen. There's something that says XPUB slash ZPUB. You're going to copy that information. You're going to jump right back here and paste it in. And then you're going to hit continue. This should give you a list of Bitcoin addresses. So let's take a look at that first one. It starts with BC1. It ends in 0WA. All we're going to do is go over to Sparrow. We're going to go to our addresses and double check that that looks the same. BC1, 0WA. That would indicate that BTC Pay Server now has the correct information to pull up addresses from the wallet that we own. BTC Pay Server has no credentials to spend. They require the keys. We have the keys on our computer or in our hardware device, uh, but this just allows it to receive payments. So if that looks good, I'm going to hit confirm. And there we go. Okay. So everything else here looks good. You can add additional if you want to put fingerprint, key path, all that stuff. You can uh, that's pretty much it. It says wallet settings uh, for BTC have been updated. I'm just going to hit save settings just in case. I haven't changed anything, but looks good. And I'll go back to the dashboard and look at that. We now see Bitcoin is green, little green dot beside it. We're good to go. Perfect. So we now have an on-chain Bitcoin wallet. That is all you need to do. And uh, as we create pages where we can receive payments, any on-chain Bitcoin payment will go direct into this Sparrow wallet that we have set up or the hardware device, the device that you've set up. Uh, that's pretty much it. Um, you can do the same thing with something like Blue Wallet and plenty of other options out there. Sparrow is just one option and it's one that I like because it has all the tools that I need. But with that, we'll see transactions happening later, but let's jump to Lightning now and figure out how to set up our own Lightning node. All right, back on our main dashboard where we can navigate to that up in the top left by clicking there. Uh, we're, we no longer have the prompts present, right? So how do we go about setting up our Lightning wallet? We're gonna go down over on the left under wallets, there is Lightning. We're going to click on that. It's gonna give us a couple options. We can either use an internal node 
or we can use a custom node. So it says using the BTC Pay server internal node for this store requires no further configuration. Click the save button below to start accepting Bitcoin through the Lightning Network. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit save. Okay, so here we go. So it drops us into our Lightning settings. So it says internal node is enabled. Um, if we ever want to change that, we can. There's options to change connection over here. Um, now, payment. So we can display lightning payment amounts in Satoshis. We can add hop hints for private channels to the lightning invoice. We can unify on-chain and lightning payments into a single QR code. There's lots of little additional steps here. Um, however, that is pretty much everything on this main internal node. So with all that, um, we are right now, if you if you look over on the left, it says lightning and underneath in selected in green is settings. So we've saved all this, this is all good to go. And if we click on lightning itself, it will take you to kind of the info that we need and being able to manage our actual lightning node. So I'm going to click on Ride the Lightning. This is a, a piece of software that allows us to figure out what's going on with our Lightning node. So I'll click on that. It's going to open up a new window. And so this shows our Lightning channels. And the way that you can think of a Lightning channel is you have Bitcoin locked up between two people and you're able to bounce it back and forth between each other. And so you can imagine if I had a lightning channel to you and let's say there were 10 million sats in that lightning channel. Well, I on maybe on my end, I lock it up and it's like there's a, a string between us and each sat is a little bead on the string. And when I pay you, I can slide the beads to your side of the string. Now, you may be thinking, well, does everybody have to have a lightning channel to every single other person? No. The way that it would work is if I want to pay someone else other than you, you will likely have connections to other people as well. So I bump a bead to your side of the string. You bump a bead to somebody else's side of the string. They have other connections. And so through this six degrees of Kevin Bacon kind of way, you can bump payments through multiple parties um, to get to the intended destination. Um, and as a merchant, what you really want is you want somebody to open a lightning channel to you to lock up Bitcoin to you so that you can, through that channel, receive payments. And so this is the part where um, if you're going to be kind of more self-sovereign, then you're looking at buying a lightning channel, um, paying for somebody to lock up their Bitcoin between you and them so that you have the ability to receive inbound lightning payments. Now, there are many different ways to do this, but we're just going to go and we're going to be using um, a lightning service provider somewhere where you can pay to have somebody do exactly what I've just described. So let's get our bearings here on Ride the Lightning first, and then we will get ourselves a lightning channel to receive payments. All right, so here on Ride the Lightning, once again to recenter ourselves, We've clicked on Lightning for the dropdown. We've chosen Peers slash Channels. And this shows where we can manage our Lightning channels. And we want to open, get a channel open to us by a Lightning service provider. So we're going to buy a channel so that we have inbound liquidity. We can receive payments. Um, there's a couple, there's a, actually a bunch of different options out there. I'll highlight a couple. Uh, there's one called lnbig.com. Uh, there's another one called Olympus ln.com. Both of these, you can purchase lightning channels to your node. Uh, so let's take a look at ln big. And so on the main screen here, as you scroll down, uh, there's an option to purchase an inbound channel from ln big. And it lets you know, okay, so there's a slider here, you can get like massive channels or small ones. Um, what I like to do is I like to get pretty big channels um, so that I don't have any issues with payments, aka if I know I'm going to be receiving a bunch of payments, um, I set that threshold where um, if it gets to a certain point, yes, I can pull money off, 
but I don't want to have issues with invoices being like, oh, my my lightning node is full or whatever. So I typically lean towards like a big channel, like five, 10 million sats, something like that. Um, but for this demo, because I don't want to, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be using this particular BTC pay instance because I'm kind of exposing it all. And you know, it will, it will be shut by the time I'm, I'm posting this video. So I'm going to keep it small. I'm going to do a 200,000 sat channel. So, I will say that a 200,000 sat channel for most of you is going to be too small unless you're just experimenting and learning. Uh, a million sats plus is probably better. But again, I, I like to have a nice big channel, so I just don't have to worry about it in the future. Um, nonetheless, 200,000 sat channel is going to cost me about nine bucks or 9,913 sats. Um, that only allows me to receive up to $180 USD at the time of recording this video. So you can see the difference where if I'm looking, oh, I want a 5 million sat channel, it's like a five grand channel. And and then, you know, anything beyond that, I'm like, well, I, I should probably pull it off the note anyways. Um, but it lets me know all that info. Uh, it also says what is the on-chain fee to open, um, what's the closing fee, all of that. Okay. So it says it, you agree to the following terms um, that there's no guarantees that the channel will remain a long time, but we will keep it open at least a month. Uh, use the channel. If it's inactive for 30 days, it'll see it be seen as useless and lead to closure. No guarantees. Lightning is reckless. Of course, channel closures can happen. Now, I, what I will say is that LN Big versus something like Olympus, um, they will guarantee six months. Uh, so, you know, pick your poison. Um, but for, we're going to use Ellen big today, just as the example. Okay. Uh, again, first channel, then Satoshi's you only pay after the successful opening of a channel. Um, what is the price of the channel? Again, it cover, covers the transaction and opening the channel, but it's a future false, sorry, it's future force closure and price for renting the funds. So again, why are you paying for a channel? Well, because you're asking somebody to take Bitcoin that they own and lock it in a multi-sig with you. So they could be using it for other purposes. They could be doing other things with it, but they are locking it with you for whatever period of time your LSP has guaranteed. Okay. Um, yep. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit, I agree. And this is a HODL invoice. The funds will be taken only after the successful channel opening service. So basically, I'm going to send funds, or again, around nine bucks to this particular invoice. And then if the channel opens, then it will go to LN Big. If it doesn't open, it will be refunded back to my wallet. I'm going to use a Lightning wallet that I have in my, in my browser here. It's called, uh, it's called Speed super easy to use, um, but it's just a browser plugin. If you want to check them out, I've got a link down below, but I'm going to hit copy. Again, if I had a lightning wallet on my phone, uh, I could just scan it, but I kind of want to show it in browser just so you can see. So I copied the invoice. I'm going to open speed here. I'm going to hit send and I'll paste in the invoice. I hit proceed. It, rec it re uh, recognizes how much it's for. I'll go ahead and send. Should go off relatively quick here. Okay, so now that that has gone through, um, it says scan the LN URL with your node wallet to open the channel or enter the node ID of the node to receive the channel. So where we're going to get this is we're going to go to Ride the Lightning and we're going to go to Public Key and we're going to copy the node Public Key. We'll jump back. I'll paste that information in and we'll hit check it. Okay, so it says, please check the node info. You are here because you filled the node ID. Please confirm that the channel type below are correct. So it says type of channel. I'll do a public channel. Uh, and I'm going to say, all right. And now it says your action is required. Please connect to Ellen Big listed below as a peer. Okay, so I need to copy... Let's do this one. Okay, so I need to copy this information and I need to add them as a peer. So let's see how to do that. 
We'll just click out of this. So again, I'm on Lightning, Peers and Channels. There's two tabs, Channels and Peers. Go to Peers, hit Add a Peer, and just paste in the information that you copied, and we'll hit Add Peer. Okay, Peer added, Ellen Big. I'm not gonna open a channel myself to them, they're gonna do that for me. So I now have them as a peer. Oh, there we go. Okay, so as soon, there we go. Happy end, I like that. Uh, as soon as I connected to them as a peer, they opened the channel to me, okay? So it, I'm gonna leave this open for a second, but let's go back to Ride the Lightning. Let's do a quick little refresh. We'll go to Channels, and look, I can see under Pending, there's one pending open from LN Big for 200,000 sats. So this is going to take a few confirmations to uh, be spendable and usable. But uh, once it moves from pending to open, that means we're now able to receive payments uh, via BTC Pay. So again, let's do a quick recap here. What all did we do? We went to... We'll go back all the way back. I'll close Ride the Lightning, all of that. We went to, from BTC Pay Server, uh, we went to Lightning. We opened Ride the Lightning. Okay, from there, over on the left, we chose Lightning, Peers and Channels, and this is where we needed to be. We then went to LN Big, and we said, hey, I want to open a channel. And we used the slider to choose how big of the channel we needed. Then it said you need to pay an invoice. It cost us around nine bucks. So we sent that from another Lightning wallet. Uh, and again, I used uh, Speed as an example. If you want to see how to use them, that can be a nice, easy jumping off point for you if you need to pay a Lightning invoice and you don't have a Lightning wallet. Um, then it says, what's your node info? Where are we opening a channel to? So we jumped back. We went to the public key and copied that info and we let Ellen Big know, hey, this is our node. And then it said, check everything. Does this look okay? I used a public channel because just for receiving payments and everything. And again, for the purposes of this video, um, I didn't mind that. But uh, you can look into public versus private channels later if you like. I hit all right. And then it said, oh, hey, you need to add us as a peer so that we're allowed to open a channel to you. So I used uh, this one right here, node ID, uh, LN Big, Edge 4, LN Big. They have a bunch of different nodes, so you can kind of take your pick. Um, but this one gave me pretty much everything I needed. Um, so I just used this one in particular. Uh, again, if you have an issue with any of these, just try another one. But I hit copy. I went back to ride the lightning and under lightning, peers and channels, I went to the peers and then I hit add peer and I pasted in their info. And that gave me a connection to them. And as soon as I did that, they said, great, we opened a lightning channel for you to your node. And I was able to see that under channels pending. Eventually that will be confirmed on chain, meaning we now have a lightning channel to us. So when we see it, now moved over to open, we will now be able to receive payments via BTC Pay. So we'll wait for that to happen. We'll come back and then we'll start setting up uh, different pages and buttons and things like that so that we can actually start using BTC Pay and receiving payments. And it's been a bit of time now. We now have uh, an officially open channel. So you can see it shifted from pending to open from LN Big, and I'll just get myself off the screen here for a moment because I just want to show that the channel capacity is 193,000 sats. Um, and why is that? Again, that's because of the channel reserve. So each side of the channel is going to have a reserve of around 3,000 sats, and that is to account for if this channel gets closed and on-chain fees are a little bit higher, then that will cover the cost of the channel closure. So um, just keep that in mind when you go to open channels. This is why I also say bigger channels um, are a little bit more efficient because the channel reserve may be uh, not as a large of a percentage of the channel itself. But nonetheless, we're ready to go and we're gonna start using BTC Pay Server. All right, so now that we have our payment mechanism set up, 
we're good to go. Let's go ahead and take a peek at how to set up first a point of sale. Okay, so this is uh, down on the left where it says point of sale. You're going to click on that and we're going to set up a test store and I'm going to name it that. Just call it test store and we'll hit create. You can name it whatever you want, of course. So that is now going to drop me into, you can see below point of sale test store that I've named it. And we now have the opportunity to update our point of sale. And so we can do things like give the app a name. We can have a display title that can be different from the app name. Um, so maybe I'll call this, uh, we'll just call it sessions store. Um, and now it asks, what kind of point of sale is this? Is it going to be a product list? Is it a product list with a cart? So product list would be just uh, you pick one and you go or one is you can put multiple items in and then tally the total. Um, again, print display, keypad, whatever, however you want to have this set up. So keypad would be like an in-store terminal. You type in an amount, you're good to go. Let's do an online perspective. Let's do a product list with a cart, okay? Ask your native currency. And then what do you want this page to look like? And it, it gives lots of options here. You can attach images. You can do whatever you want, but just for simplicity's sake, let's just say, welcome to my store. And then maybe I'll add in a picture. So you can just search and upload a picture if you like. Okay, so I've got an image there. And maybe I'll just align this in the middle and, and we'll make it nice and big. Okay. So there we go. Um, you know, you can put any information in here, but again, just for an example. And then right here it has an editor of products. And so they have a bunch of, uh, you know, examples here, but if you obviously to get rid of them, you can just hit X and it'll, it'll remove them. Um, just so we have a few things in here, I'll use, I'll leave two of them, but I'll also show you how to add one. So let's go ahead. So we've selected, we've created a new item and we've selected it. Um, if you select another one, you can see how that was set up. And so what I can do is select the item, we'll give it a title. And, and again, the title is what front facing people will see. The ID is what you'll see in your back end if somebody purchases it. So I'll just say, uh, we'll just call this hat. And it gives it the hat. And if you have like a special ID for it, then you can, you know, do whatever you want. Okay, what's the price going to be? Let's say $2 for a hat. It's a cheap hat. Uh, and then image. Now you can either link to an image on the internet or you can upload one. So I opted to upload one right here. Give it a hat. I'll be like, this is a pretty great hat. Uh, you can add categories if you like. I'll just leave that. Uh, also, if you have a limited number of hats or whatever you're selling, you can uh, change the inventory to reflect that. I'm going to leave that for now. Um, and then for the buy button text, I'm just going to say add to cart or whatever you want. Um, okay. And then this enable toggle switch is do you want this product available in the store that you're making? Okay. Okay. Uh, text to display on each button with a specific price. Uh, request customer data on checkout. Okay, so um, so we've got a few items here. And I believe I can just... I'm going to hit save since I've done this hat information. Okay, perfect. I don't know if that image worked. Oh, I had to upload it. There we go. Now there's the hat. Okay, let's save that again. Okay, cool. So we've now added an item. We've got green tea, black tea, and, and a hat. Uh, that all looks good. Now you can, there's plenty of different options here. You can, again, display a search bar, category list if you have categories. You can add tips if you want. Um, again, plenty of options. Um, da, 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 da. Anything else that we want? Again, there's a lot of 
specific things that you can add in. You can even redirect uh, to um, a, a page upon upon purchase, um, but we'll just leave that. It can redirect people back. I'm, I'm not going to add in any special things here. We just, again, the goal is to just kind of see what this looks like. Okay. So I've got my items. I've got my text for the store. I've got everything that I need. Let's save this one last time. And then we're going to hit view. And this will show you an accessible page that anybody can go to on the internet. It's up here. You can share that. So let's take a look. Let's maybe we want to buy everything in the store. And notice that the the buttons here, they say buy for one dollar, buy for one dollar, add to cart. So again, you, you just want to be consistent with your, your labels and your descriptions. But um, from the perspective of somebody looking to buy something, they can click on items to add them to the cart. Once they do so um, and they're finished, they can hit pay and this will bring up an invoice and you have the option of paying on-chain Bitcoin or Lightning based on the toggle switch that you hit. And so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to try paying this invoice here. Uh, again, I'll do it from the browser just so you can kind of see everything, but um, I could scan this with a phone, but I'm going to hit copy on the invoice there. Let's drop down our speed wallet there. We'll hit send. I will paste that in and proceed. Now it sees that it's for $4. Let's see how the payment goes. There we go. We have confetti. We have sent payment from speed. Everything went through just great. So it gives the option to view a receipt or you can return to the store uh, however you like, but that's fantastic. Now, if you'll notice, uh, I made a purchase there, but you know, what if, um, what if I needed to ship something to them? I didn't request any information. And so this is where you want to fine tune your store a little bit more. So to navigate there again, from your main screen over on the left under point of sale, I can see that particular store. And so I can go and I can change what is required from uh, the person that is paying. So right here, it says request customer data on checkout. There's a drop down, email addresses only or shipping address. So I can plunk that in. And if I hit save, that will then change the look of this store. So if I go and hit view, I want to buy that. I'm going to hit pay. Okay. Email name, address, all that kind of stuff so that I can appropriately ship this to the individual. So there you go. We can also take a look at what if this looks a little bit different? What if we want to just have a keypad instead? In fact, actually, you know what? We'll keep that as is and we'll create a new store just to kind of see what that would look like differently. So we'll go click on point of sale. We'll do um, in store point of sale, call it that. We'll hit create and we're just going to have this as a keypad and choose a currency, USD. We're not going to request any information. Um, you can display an item selection for the keypad or you can just have it as a keypad. We'll just leave it as a keypad. Um, you can enable tips. So let's say that maybe this is a restaurant. Yeah, sure. Let's add tips. Um, you can have text to display percentage amounts, comments, comma separated. If you like, I'll just leave that as is we won't. And, uh, users can input discount in percent. No, we don't want to add discounts for a point of sale. Um, and I think we'll just leave it at that. Okay. Let's see what this looks like and let's change, uh, my food house great name for a restaurant anyways we'll save that okay great let's view this one so this just simply pops up and this is perfect for something again this link up here can be shared anywhere so you can post place that into any browser on any device anywhere so having an ipad or something like that up front makes this easy and so what you can do here is uh the person at the point of sale would say okay you owe two bucks. Um, 
Again, you can add tip. Let's add a 15% tip. There we go. So $2.30. We'll hit charge. And once again, we're going to be greeted with options of how to pay. Okay. And then you can see you have Bitcoin or you have Lightning. And Lightning, once again, I can copy that. Let's just do a quick one here. We'll send, paste, proceed. All right. And there we go. Invoice is paid. Confetti. We're happy. So there again, you have an example of just a simple point of sale terminal. Um, you could have a list of items that you can add on there, or you can just have you type in the final amount and you're good to go, which is, you know, for markets, things like that, that would work just fine. Um, so we now basically have two different point of sales that we can use wherever we like. This test store one that we did before with the items, maybe that's online, maybe that's linked from a website where somebody can simply access it and you can just post it and say, hey, I've got an online store if you want to go buy from there, there you go. Um, whereas the other one might be in an actual brick and mortar environment. Let's next look at the crowdfunding option. Um, and so I'm going to click on crowdfund and this would be like if you're looking for tips or if you have a, a crowdfund for a specific goal or whatever it is, uh, but we'll just do test crowdfund and we'll hit create and very similar story. It's just going to ask you what settings you want, what, you know, what you want the, the page to say, if there's incentives, if there's various things that you might want to do with it. And so again... Uh, help me stack sats will be my display title. Uh, I can have a tagline as well. Stay humble, donate sats. <laughs> um, again, you can have a featured image or something like that if you want. And then, um, uh, stacking sats like crazy. And I'll just... We'll just give that a header. We'll put it in the middle. And I think we're good there. Okay. So I'm not going to add it. You already know how to add in images. You can put in videos. There's all kinds of stuff you could put in there, but regardless. Okay. So do we have a goal, a target amount we're trying to raise? Maybe we're trying to raise $100. Okay. Do we have a start and an end date? Uh, do we have special perks if people donate certain amounts? Um, we can sort contribution perks by popularity. Uh, you can display contribution rankings. You can display contribution values. Um, so yeah, you can say, do not allow additional contributions after the target has been reached. You can do all of these different things. Um, you can uh, you, you can do a, a, a lot of different things here. Um, you can request information again if it's a crowdfund, not as necessary. So I can just leave that blank, um, unless of course there's there's perks or something for contributing certain amounts. Then absolutely. Uh, but yeah, so that's about that. Let's just save it. Okay, and now we'll view that page. And again, uh, the URL that is provided can be shared and post it anywhere and then just linked from a website. So pretty basic. We haven't really put anything special here, um, but we have a, uh, an amount raised, a percent of goal. We see the, the soft cap goal up top. We see the text that we put it in. So if somebody hits contribute, they're going to be presented with some options. And so of course there's just a regular Bitcoin address, but I can choose lightning and I can uh, it, it says any amount here. So I can basically copy this. It's LN URL, which means that there's no set amount. I can just send as much as I please. So to see what that looks like again up here with Speed Wallet as the example is I will uh, paste in that invoice, which is a zero amount. And then it lets me put in the amount that I like. Okay. So um, 
if I want to set it in dollars, let's just say I want to donate one dollar. OK, so I'm going to go ahead. I'll hit send. There we go. Invoice is paid. Off it goes. I can X out of that. And now that page will reflect the change in the amount that has been collected and the percentage of the goal that we've reached and the number of contributors. So that's super awesome. Again, if there was information requested from the individual, then there would be, uh, you, you can see like a ranking and all that. But there we go. We created our crowdfunding page, easy. And again, this is great for, you know, donations, for whatever your, your reasoning is for posting it. There you go. Um, and so we've kind of now gone through different points of sales. We've gone through crowdfunding and donations and tips. Um, there's lots of cool things here. Now let's take a look at some of the additional things that you can do with your BTC pay server in terms of ways to collect money and have people send to you. Now, before we move on here, I do want to show um, just as you begin dealing with payments and getting some come in, you will see uh, updates to the lightning balance here, obviously, because that's where I've been receiving payments. But you can see it is adjusted, lets me know how much is there. Um, you can, uh, in the settings, change it to display in sats as well, if you like. Um, but you'll see any recent invoices. So you can tell that I've been experimenting in the background. There's some expired invoices and everything as well. Um, you can also see a breakdown of items that have been sold, uh, in-store point of sales, um, all of that kind of stuff, crowdfund contributions. All of that is available here on your main dashboard. Now, of course, if, uh, if we were to receive an on-chain transaction, then that would be uh, reflected here. And of course, it would also be reflected in the wallet that we've linked here with Sparrow. Now, um, we don't really need to dive into that. Again, if you're familiar with using Sparrow, you'll be able to send and receive from there. But um, I think you get the point with that. It'll just be accessible within that wallet. Now, what if you do want to spend from this lightning balance? Of course, we know what to do with the on-chain balance. But um, once again, you're going to be using Ride the Lightning. So again, you can you can access that from clicking on the Lightning on the left, or from the main dashboard over here on the right, just above me, uh, is another way to access Ride the Lightning. But um, more or less, once you're in here, uh, just on the main dashboard, there's a Receive and Pay option, and so this is for you can do transactions into and out of this particular Lightning node. Um, so, you know, when a balance builds up and you want to move it somewhere else, you can just go ahead and you can hit pay and you just needed a lightning invoice. So like if I was over on speed and I were to hit receive and add an amount of, I don't know, like a hundred sats or something, I would just be copying that invoice, pasting in here and sending the payment off. So, um, pretty simple there. Just paste in, send, you're good to go. Um, outside of that. The other alternative is I could go to my lightning channels and if this lightning channel, all of the liquidity was on my side, which you can see here. And let me just get myself off the screen here. But again, just a little uh, breakdown of it. It shows local balance and remote balance. So on my side, I can see the 8200 sats that I have on the other side. I can see the 184 or 185 over there. Um, so if this built up and I had a bunch of I had a bunch of um, funds on my side, if I didn't want to keep this channel open and it was full and I didn't want to do anything with it and I didn't want to send it out as a lightning payment, I could also do actions and I could uh, I could close the channel that way. I wouldn't necessarily recommend doing that very often unless you need to. Um, there's other ways that you can, uh, that you can get your funds and send them out. The simplest way is to send them to an external lightning wallet that can auto swap to on chain if you need to. Um, but that is one option if you need access to those funds again, all managed here. Uh, but with that, we've kind of gone through, we've set up some pages, we've received payments, we've seen how to access the funds that come in. Um, but 
I want to hone in on lightning. If you don't want to be managing your own node, you may be looking at this ride the lightning stuff and be saying, oh, that's, that seems like a lot. What about if you could just link a simple lightning wallet that you have access to and just see the balance there from a mobile device and uh, be able to spend it immediately wherever you see fit. That's what we're going to dive into next uh, with a plugin for Strike. All right, so what I'm going to do here, and the reason, by the way, I'm using Strike as an example is because uh, Strike is now available in a lot of different countries and um, it's pretty easy and uh, the U.S. doesn't have a whole lot of options and there's quite a bit of viewership from the U.S. So I want to use something that's uh, easy for them to access as well. Uh, this also can be done with Blink. They've got a similar setup and, and plugin here that you can use, but let's use Strike as the example today. Uh, so you're going to go over down to the left near the bottom, Manage Plugins. There's a lot, a lot of different plugins that you can get for BTC Pay. We're just going to focus on this today, um, and then we'll have subsequent videos down the line uh, regarding some of these other cool things that you can do. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna scroll down. I'm looking for Strike right here. Here we go. Uh, and so this is now updated, so it's compatible with the latest version of BTC Pay, which is great. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit install. So it'll take a little bit. Um, there we go, plugin scheduled to be installed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, perfect. So it is, again, gonna take a little bit. It says you're gonna need to restart BTC Pay Server in order to um, update your active plugins. Okay, well, that's all good. So it's scheduled to be installed. Um, and so what's gonna happen, and I'll X out of these, there's the option to restart now. We're gonna do that in a moment. It will restart BTC Pay but it's gonna pop up as a plugin on the left-hand side. And then we'll be able to configure it to link up with our Strike wallet, um, where we'll be able to just receive payments there. And I, again, the caveat here is that Strike, of course, is a custodial KYC option. And so for those that that doesn't really bother and you just want the ease of the payments and not having to deal with Lightning Channels, here you go. Uh, same can be done with Blink. Again, this is, and uh, you can see it right here, there's the Blink plugin. Exact same idea, same general steps. Um, it outlines how to do it. And on the bottom of each one of these plugins, there's something that says documentation. And when you click on it, it'll also show the steps that I'm about to go through. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit restart now and uh, and it'll take a little while for this to come through, but once it restarts, we will get moving with BTC Pay. So you can see it's restarting momentarily. We'll be right back. All right, so now that uh, it has restarted, and if you don't see it restart, you can just click on Dashboard in the top left. It'll take you back, and once you're on the main page and everything loads up, you can check that everything worked as planned because if you scroll down on the left hand side under plugins, you should see strike. So we're going to go ahead and click on that and it says we need to uh, configure the connection string. So we need to connect our strike wallet to give it an option for lightning payments. So we're going to click on where it says here. And then it says uh, we can configure the strike plugin here. It does give some instructions on exactly what you're going to do down below, but let's just walk through it together. So we're going to visit the, uh, oh, actually, we're going to hit configure strike plugin here. We are going to, we are currently using an internal node, but we're going to use a custom node. And because of the plugin that we added, we can see strike right here is an option. So I'm going to click that. And it says, this is the information you're going to paste up here in this section. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy that for right now, but we're going to, we need to get some information from our actual strike account, um, for this last little string here. So I'll explain all of this in a moment, but first we're going to click on strike dashboard. And that's going to open up a new window for us. This allows us to log into our Strike account. And again, you do need a Strike account for this. But once you have one, we hit Login. 
It's going to ask for an email address, which I have associated with it. And I'm going to hit next. And this is going to email me a login verification code. Okay. And so I just received that to my email right now. And I'm going to be typing it in. And then it asked me for the pin that I've already associated with my account prior to this. And I'll hit next. Okay, so this logs me into Strike. And in the top right, there is a little sandwich board menu and I can hit that and I'm gonna choose API keys. And we're going to create an API key. Now I'm gonna get myself off the screen here for a second. And what we need to do is under account, we're gonna hit that little arrow and select both of these. Under, uh, let's see, receive requests, we're gonna choose both of those. Receiving payments, uh, we can leave that. And rates, it's already selected. So I believe that's okay. And we'll just give this a name, we'll just call it BTC pay. We'll hit next. That looks good. I'm going to hit create API key and it gives me this key, which I'm going to copy to my clipboard. Let's jump back over to BTC pay server. So this string up here that we have, there's a couple things I'm going to change type equals strike. That's good. Currency equals fiat. For me, that's not good. I want, and I'll get myself back on screen here. I want, this basically means when you receive a payment into your strike wallet, do you want to be uh, pegged to the fiat amount or the Bitcoin amount. If you hit fiat, it will stay as US dollars or whatever your local currency is, and it won't fluctuate with the price of Bitcoin. I don't want that. I want it to be BTC. So I literally am going to type instead of fiat, BTC, and I'm going to leave it like that. So that's good. Type, strike, currency, BTC. Last one, API key equals, we need to paste in Instead of where it says X, 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 dot, 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 we're going to delete that and we're going to paste in the key we just copied from our strike page. Now, at this point, we can hit test connection. Connection to the Lightning node successful. Node address has, uh, node public address has been configured. So this is now done. We're going to hit save. And now it says BTC Lightning Node updated. And that means, it should mean, that now whenever we receive a payment on our store, it will go directly to our Strike wallet. So let me just get out of this. Let's go to home. And, uh, and this shows our Bitcoin balance. Now make note, there's about a thousand sats there. Not much right now. But let's test Let's go to one of our stores. Let's do our, go to our test store and let's view it. And uh, let's buy a hat. I'll hit pay. Oh yeah, right. Let's not buy a hat. <laughs> I don't want to put in address information right now. Okay, let's, let's do our, okay. So instead we'll use our point of sale terminal with just the keypad. So we'll view that and uh, let's do a dollar fifty. Okay, so we've got that up there. We're gonna hit charge. Pay with lightning. I'm gonna copy that. Let's go to our speed wallet here, and I'll just paste that in and proceed. Dollar fifty. Send. Hopefully that goes off no problem. Looks like it did. Perfect. Invoice is paid. We see it here. Uh, on BTC Pay server, but the question is, where did it go? Let's double check strike and let's give it a little refresh. Oh, there we go. We have an updated balance uh, that we've just received. Let's hit activity here. There we go. Paid to test order. We can actually see the transaction that went through Lightning. Everything is right there. Awesome. Beautiful. So we've successfully linked our Strike account. And so if I have this app on my phone, then I instantly have access to this. I can just spend it as is with my Strike wallet. 
and I don't have to deal with lightning channels or anything like that. It's all just linked together in my BTC pay server. Anytime somebody pays me for a product or a service or whatever it may be, I see it in strike right away if it's a lightning uh, payment and I can use it immediately from my mobile device. Really quick, I do want to show that Blink is another option. I've already jumped ahead and installed the plugin and everything's good to go. Um, now, little difference here, you're not going to see Blink in the left hand side, but what you can do is you click on Lightning, you go to Settings, and you're going to hit Change Connection. At this point, you're going to use a custom node, but you're going to now see Blink is added as an option. And so with the arrow there, you have this string that you can copy and paste up here. Uh, but you're going to go over to the Blink dashboard. Now this will take you to a place where you can log into your Blink account. It's much the same. Uh, you paste in your, your email address, it'll send you a, a login code, so on and so forth. Now I've already done that. I'm here on the Blink dashboard and there's an option for API keys and I can hit the plus button to create a new API key. We'll call this BTC pay Luna test. Um, when's it, I'm going to give it an expiry date just because I'm not going to be using this uh, instance of BTC pay for a long time. Um, and so I want to be able to read, to receive. Um, you don't have to uh, do write. In fact, I'm going to click that off. That has to do with sending payments. So um, I'm going to hit create. This is going to give me a string, and uh, I believe that's all I need. I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to copy that. I'll go back, and where it says API key, I'm going to delete the random stuff they had, and I'm going to paste that, and let's test connection and see. Successful. We got the green light. Uh, we'll just hit save down below. And there we go, lightning node is updated and let's do a test transaction just to make sure everything is working all right. So we'll get back to our dashboard. I'll do the point of sale terminal. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Okay, we'll view that. Okay, so let's do, I don't know, let's do, Let's just do 50 cents as an example. We'll hit charge. That should give us on-chain and lightning options. We'll choose lightning. There's our invoice. I'll copy that. Let's just do a test transaction up here. Ooh, just enough. Paste it in, proceed, yep. And we're gonna hit send. Hopefully that's okay, sent. There's our confetti, and then really quick, I'll pull up my uh, Blink wallet and double check on my mobile device here, make sure that it's functioning just fine and that I received a payment. And there I can see it in my wallet. I got my, my 50 cents. If it's too small on the screen, take my word for it, but I see it here in the wallet. And so again, uh, I've connected BTC Pay to Blink and then I no longer have to worry about managing liquidity if I do not want to. And uh, again, that's totally up to you. But now you have the tools at your disposal. You can create your own lightning channels and fully self-sovereignly manage that yourself. Or you can connect to something like Strike or Blink so that you don't have to deal with any of that. Now, there's one last thing I want to show here, and that is just that, as I mentioned before, Take a look, here is one of our point of sales that we set up with the pin pad, but this could also apply to um, really anything, the crowdfund, the whatever it is that you've made, um, accessible from anywhere with the URL that is at the top of your browser here. And just to show, I have my phone loaded up with the same thing right here. I can, again, create an invoice for whatever amount I want and charge, and it will work as normal. And you get the same options, Bitcoin or Lightning. Now, I do want to know one thing. If I tap on Lightning here, uh, there is an option down below for pay by NFC. However, uh, this is not 
integrated with phones. At least in, in my experience, I'm not able to accept tap by NFC. This would pertain to something called a Bolt card, uh, which is a preloaded lightning pay tap and pay card. Uh, however, um, something like this guy, which I'll be covering in future videos, this is the Bitcoinized machine, can of course be paired with your BTC pay server and, uh, and you'd be able to tap to pay with this device. And so uh, keep your eyes peeled. I'm going to be covering that. And I'm also going to be covering the thing I'm mentioning, bolt cards, which are those lightning cards. You can actually create those uh, with this machine as well and BTC pay server. So lots of cool things to cover still with BTC pay, but uh, at least you've got the basic functionality. You know how to set up stores. You know how to use them uh, both online and in person with a phone. So there you go. So some final thoughts here. Again, as I uh, continue to think, BTC Pay Server is one of the most important projects out there in the Bitcoin space. The ability to be a merchant, have a point of sale terminal and be able to accept payments uh, in an easy way without having to manually um, do anything when the person is paying is very, very important. And the ability to self-host with open source software is, of course, very, very uh, useful and important for a lot of people and will continue to be even more so moving forward. Um, I love the ability to uh, link it into whatever my preference is in terms of on-chain wallets going direct to cold storage, hosting my own Lightning node, or just having this simple option to plug in something like Strike or Blink and other options that we'll cover in subsequent videos. But the versatility of this and the way that you can basically use it to your exact specifications and needs, most of which we you know, barely even scratch the surface of all the intricacies that you can get into. Um, again, just very, very useful. So I got to tip my hat to everybody over at BTC Pay Server uh, for doing the Lord's work and uh, providing people with this wonderful tool. I would love to hear what you think. Please let me know in the comments down below uh, your experiences, self-hosting, using BTC Pay Server, what features you'd like. Uh, if there are plugins that you've tried that we didn't cover here, let me know what you'd like to see in future videos as well. And I look forward to hearing your responses. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please do like, sub, share, all those things, they help a ton. You can also hit up the previously mentioned sponsors in the show notes down below. And if you're perusing the channel through the tutorials and you need a little bit of extra help, reach out to my team over at bitcoinmentor.io. We've got incredible educators there that can, you walk, can walk you through video calls one-on-one -on -one to help you with wallets, hardware, multi-sig, BTC pay server, nodes, lightning, you name it, they can help you. And furthermore to that, you can also sign up to become an affiliate. So if you refer people to us every single session they book, you earn $21 paid out in Bitcoin. We'll see you guys next time. This has been your daily session. Huddle the Bitcoin.